Summary of Roman Fever by Edith Wharton Mrs. Ansley and Mrs. Slade, two middle-aged women, are looking at a view of Rome from the rooftop of a high-class restaurant. On the ground below, they can hear their daughters, Barbara Ansley and Jenny Slade, saying that they should leave the young things to their knitting. The women laugh at how their daughter sees them, but then Mrs. Ansley takes out her knitting in an embarrassed way to show that her daughter was right. Mrs. Ansley and Mrs. Slade decide to spend the rest of the afternoon on the terrace of the restaurant. They find two basket chairs near the edge of the roof and sit down. Mrs. Slade and Mrs. Ansley talk about how beautiful the view is and guess what their daughter is planning. They think that Barbara and Jenny have been asked to fly to Tarquinia for the evening with two young Italian pilots. In her own time, Slade thinks about how Barbara, who is lively and interesting, is different from Jenny, who is more cautious and quiet. They both seem dull to her, so she is surprised that Ansley and her late husband Horace could have such a brilliant daughter. It makes Slade think of her late husband Delphin and the full and sometimes fancy life they had together before he died. It makes her miss her son, who died when he was young, and she wishes that her perfect daughter was more charming and lively, like Barbara Ansley. At the same time, Ansley keeps knitting next to Slade, thinking that Slade's life has been full of mistakes and fails. The two women are quiet as they think about their long-term bond and how they see each other. As the afternoon goes on, Ansley suggests that we go to the embassy to play cards. While she is thinking, Slade decides to stay on the terrace, and Ansley follows suit. Slade talks about how Rome has meant different things to different groups of American women, but she isn't really thinking about it. For their grandmothers, the city at night was scary because of the risk of Roman fever. On the other hand, when she and Ansley went to Rome together as young women, they were not afraid and even liked the feeling of danger that came with being out at night. Ansley doesn't respond to these words in a satisfactory way because she seems to be focused on her knitting, and Slade gets angry. When Slade went to Rome many years ago, Ansley told her a story about how her great-aunt Harry sent her sister on an errand at night during an attack of Roman fever because she was jealous of the man she loved and didn't want her sister to compete for his attention. Harriet's sister got the fever and passed away because of it. This story makes Slade remember how Ansley got really sick after staying out late one night on a trip they took a long time ago to Rome, supposedly to see the sights. Slade keeps asking Ansley about her illness, but Ansley dodges the questions. Soon, Slade tells Ansley that she knows why she went out late the night before she got sick. Ansley got a love letter from Delphin, who was engaged to Slade at the time, telling her he loved her and wanted to meet up at the Colosseum. Ansley is shocked when Slade starts to quote from the letter. She is even more shocked when Slade says that she wrote the letter, not Delphin. In her speech, Slade says that Ansley's beauty and kindness made her feel threatened, and she was worried when she found out that Ansley loved Delphin. She says she wanted Ansley to get sick so that she would be out of the way, and she thought that the disappointment of not finding Delphin at the Colosseum would make her forget about her feelings for him. When Slade saw how upset Ansley was when she found out that Delphin's letter wasn't real, she told her in a mean way that she had laughed at the thought of Ansley waiting outside the Colosseum for someone who would never come. But after Slade says this, Ansley corrects her. He had already come to the Colosseum on the night suggested in the letter, so she doesn't have to wait for him. The letter from Slade had an answer from Ansley, who said she would meet him. She says she is shocked and hadn't thought about the chance that Ansley would answer the letter. Now it's getting dark outside. Ansley stands up to leave and says that the deck is too cold for her. She tells Slade she's sorry while she gets her things together. To which Slade replies, I don't see why Ansley should feel sorry for me. Despite being beaten in her long ago plan to stop Ansley from being a competitor, she had been married to Delphin for 25 years and had gotten nothing from him except that one letter that he didn't write. She turns back to Slade as she walks toward the stairs to leave the balcony and says, I had Barbara. About the author. Edith Wharton was born on January 24, 1862, as Edith Newbold Jones. She traveled and went to school in Europe for a lot of her youth and teen years. It was when she was 23 that she married Edward Robbins Wharton. 
Even though being a woman put limits on Wharton, she wrote and released a successful non-fiction book in 1897 called The Decoration of Houses. Wharton put a lot of time and thought into creating the mount, her home in Lenox, Massachusetts. She loved architecture, gardening, and the decorative arts. Author Edith Wharton wrote some of her best books, like The House of Mirth, 1905, and Ethan Frome, 1911, while she lived at the Mount for 10 years. When Wharton got divorced in 1913, she went to France and spent all of her time writing and helping people. The French Legion of Honor gave her the award for her service to her country during World War I. Throughout her life, Wharton kept writing and publishing a lot. In 1921, she was the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. She was also the first woman to be made a full member of the American Academy of Arts and Letters and to receive an honorary degree from Yale University. She was 75 years old when she died in France in 1937. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.